Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and if you were watching last year, I challenged Ulysses S. America to a fight! I'm not letting you off that easy, you social justice slob! Social just- Hey asshole, why don't you mind your own business and get the fuck off my show? Well, why don't you make me, fat boy? You know what? On the next episode of the Dan Classic Show, I'm gonna kick your fucking ass, you patriotic putz! Well, you're on, you social justice jackass! Now I know what you're thinking. I'm not much of a fighter, but guess what, assholes? I've been studying the ancient art of karate! Did you say you were studying karate? Yeah, I'm practically a karate master! Wow, how did you do that? Karate school? <laughs> No, I've been watching the Karate Kid movies. What? Ulysses is gonna beat your ass, Gorilla. Fuck that! I'm gonna kick his goddamn head off. And to celebrate, I'm reviewing the Karate Kid figures by NECA. It's your hospital, Bill. Whatever. Raz Ollie, hit the music! may have been one of the best years for movies in the history of time. Don't believe me? Well, check this shit out. Ghostbusters, Nightmare on Elm Street, Gremlins, The Terminator, Temple of Doom. Holy shit! Look this up and you'll find that a ton of all-time favorite movies were released that year. And today we're talking about The Karate Kid, the story of Daniel LaRusso, a kid from New Jersey, who moves to California with his mom and gets his ass handed to him by some local karate toughs. Which, by the way, was a real thing in California that happened all the time back then. Oh yeah, I remember stuff like that happening all the time. Where I'm from. Hollywood. Are we gonna go through this again? Daniel meets his apartment building's maintenance man, Mr. Miyagi, and discovers that the old man is a karate master. At first, Mr. Miyagi refuses to teach Daniel shit. But come on, this is the karate fucking kid. Let's get to the goddamn karate, kid. Anyway, Daniel forms a bond with Mr. Miyagi, learns karate, gets the girl, and kicks everybody's ass. This movie draws a lot of inspiration from Rocky, and why the hell not? They share a director. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's get to the toys. Okay, so let's start it off with Daniel LaRusso, the New Jersey native, um, comes in this box. I really like these NECA boxes now, where they kind of display everything that they come with. You see, he got the chopsticks, he's got the wax on, wax off hand gimmicks, and a uh, bonsai tree. Um, those are sanding pads, by the way. Um, you have the Karate Kid logo, and uh, very familiar right there, isn't that kind of cool? Um, so. And then on the side, we have some uh, images from the, the film and the, the logo, of course. And on the back, you turn it around, um, we have some, uh, shows you what the figure can do. We got the figure in poses. These already look like they pose better than those Ninja Turtles. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited for that. You've got the collect them all down here, um, or as some people like to say, cross sell. Um, there's Daniel LaRusso, Mr. Miyagi, Johnny Lawrence, and the Karate Championship 2-pack. There's also a super secret convention figure that I have as well, and we're going to see all of those today. But before we do, let's take a look and see what's on the back of the box here. When Daniel moves to California with his mom, he finds himself the target of bullies from the local karate dojo, eager to put the new kid in his place. An elderly maintenance man trains him in the ancient martial art, teaching him that true strength lies in the mind and the heart, not in the hands. Um, collect them all. Uh, Miyagi figures sold separately. 
Well, fucking obviously. And here he is, Mr. Miyagi, sold separately. Uh, the front of the box is pretty much exactly the same, except it says Mr. Miyagi includes chopsticks and bonsai trees. So he comes with one less uh, gimmick than uh, Daniel San does come with. Um, however, though, you can see um, from the outside, he does have his little key ring because he is the maintenance man. He's got his his jumpsuit. Um, there is something interesting about this figure that you might not be able to tell until we open him up. So just remember that. We got the same image of Daniel on the beach uh, practicing the crane kick as we did on the uh, the first one. And on the back, we have a, a photo of the figure. Um, there he is, uh, trimming the bonsai tree. And I don't know if you can notice um, what's up with this figure right away, but we'll see. We'll see when he opens up. When quiet maintenance man, Mr. Miyagi, rescues a local kid from a gang of bullies, the boy begs to be trained in karate so that he can stand up for himself. The former serviceman teaches him that real strength of karate is not in the fist, but in the confidence and balance it brings. Collect them all, we got our cross sell on there, and uh, we'll be moving on to the next one. And here he is, Johnny Lawrence, in the Halloween scene gear. Um, I mean, why wouldn't you do this? I think if they didn't do this, people would have been uh, kind of upset. This is one of the things that really sticks out, even if you only ever saw the movie a couple of times or even once, um, you would remember this uh, from the scene, from the Halloween scene where he, him and his buddies beat the crap out of Daniel. Um, he also has his Walkman that he was uh, listening to some tunes while he was rolling a J in the bathroom stall during the dance. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of cool. He does come with an accessory. Um, I don't know that he necessarily needs to. This is a really sick figure. Um, and then on the back, we've got um, a, a photo of Johnny Lawrence here. You can kind of see him full body. It is a very cool looking figure. The hood does go up and down. We're gonna see more of that when we open it up. But first, let's take a look what is on the back of the box here. As a star student at Cobra Kai Dojo, Johnny enjoys applying his sensei's no mercy, no prisoners techniques to any unlucky target. But when faced with a new opponent who follows a different path, he begins to wonder if karate is really what he's been taught and if this different way is worth his respect. Um, yeah, they, they kind of give him an arc on the back of the box. And I guess maybe he does by the end respect Daniel a little bit. I guess they do arc him out by the, by the end of it. Um, when he's getting his fucking ass handed to him by Kreese in the parking lot. And speaking of Kreese, here he is. This was the super secret show exclusive or convention exclusive figure. I actually got this for a pretty good price. I didn't pay too much more for it than I would have had I actually went to the convention and bought the goddamn thing. Um, pretty much the same um, as the regular box we have at the top here. It says show exclusive and we have a Cobra Kai logo, but and he doesn't come with anything special. Um, but it is it is John Kreese, so he is pretty fucking dope. And on the back, we've got a, a picture of him in front of the Cobra Kai insignia. And we have a quote. We do not train to be merciful here. Mercy is for the weak. Here, on the street, in competition, a man confronts you, he is the enemy. An enemy deserves no mercy. John Kreese. And here it is, the All Valley Karate Championship Finals, Johnny Lawrence versus Daniel LaRusso includes trophy, poster, and floor mat. This thing is freaking dope. I picked this up at my local comic book shop. Um, I don't know if they had these at Target. I don't know if I ever saw them there with the rest of the figures, but this is definitely the sort of the crown jewel of the, of the collection. Um, and which I, I like. I like the fact that this wasn't the convention exclusive that I didn't have to go to San Diego or pay some outrageous scalpy price online to, to get it. Um, I just, you know, went to my local comic book shop and they had it there. And uh, on the back we have, um, it shows you what it comes with. We've got the, the mat, we've got the poster, the background, and we've got the trophy. And it's pretty fucking cool, dude. Like you can set up that iconic scene from the movie um, when when Daniel you know does the crane kick and kicks him right in the face illegally and, and wins the tournament 
And on the back here, uh, two opposing paths collide at the All Valley Karate Championship. Daniel has trained under Mr. Miyagi, who is taught the bully boy that karate is mastery of the self. Johnny Sensei instructs his students in the brutal mastery of others. Against tremendous odds, Daniel makes it to the finals and faces his moment of truth. Can he prove himself against his nemesis and be the best around? Oh, ho, ho. I gotta admit, these things look pretty cool inside the box, but we open our toys around here, right? Well, that depends on many factors. Oh, what, you too? Out of hell with it. Let's see what these things look like outside the box. Okay, so let's start with basic Daniel LaRusso. Um, I already took all these out of the box. They come in collector's boxes, so there's really no need for me to go tearing into these things. Um, I don't open these boxes just because I get a fucking cheap thrill out of it, um, I, although I do, but I, I open them up because, you know, I'm in the bubble, there's no other way to look at the figure, and I don't buy these things to keep them in the box. Um, I, I buy them um, to, to take them out and look at them and experience them. And let's take a look at uh, Daniel. Um, he's got his basic gear on, his khaki pants, his uh, tan colored shoes. This is the same outfit um, from the movie. It's it got a little baseball shirt on. It's very, very basic. So, I mean, when you're doing stuff from a movie like this, it's not like you can, you know, it's not like a Ninja Turtles where there's going to be a lot of dynamic stuff, a lot of bright colors, and a lot of crazy shit you can do. Um, he comes with chopsticks, and he comes with sanding pads, and, and like, I mean, those are important to the, you know, to the movie, but just to look at him as a figure, he's, he's kind of just there. Um, he's very posable. I'm not going to go through all the different articulation. I'm sure there's a thousand videos online that do that. He is very posable. He's more posable than the Ninja Turtles because he doesn't have a shell or anything like that. Um, he, you know what? If you got, if you're going to get them all, you got to get this one too. Ah, so here he is. Um, Mr. Miyagi. I know that Pat Morita was not a tall man by any means. I don't think he was like, you know, a seven footer or anything. We didn't have to worry about him getting into the NBA anytime soon. But I don't think he was a little person. Um, I understand that they want to do this for scale. Let's bring back Daniel here. Um, I mean, really, dude? What is it? The fucking Lord of the Rings? He's not that short. God damn it, they fucking made his legs short. You can't tell in the box because his feet end like right past the fucking logo, right past the edge of the box where, you know, the feet disappear and you think, oh yeah, there's way more figure there. No, I mean, really, it was, really, really, really. Is this the difference in height? Is this, is, it's really, is what it is? Anyway, oh my God. Um, let's just take a look at him. The likeness is pretty cool. Um... I guess if you don't have him stood up next to any other figures, like he looks alright. Um, they, they did make him very small, but it is a very good likeness of Pat Morita, Mr. Miyagi. He's got his maintenance man outfit. He does come with chopsticks. Uh, the hand holds the chopsticks so he can sit there and catch a fly. Um, you really, I mean, I guess you could kind of sit him down. Um, the jumpsuit um, actually restricts his motion a little bit. Uh, it's harder to bend his elbows and knees. Um, he gets a little bit about about a 45 degree angle. Um, you're not really gonna do a whole lot of crazy poses with him because he's embarrassingly small. Um, he looks really, really kind of shitty, honestly. And I think a lot of other people have mentioned this before. Um, I didn't know this until the other day. Raz Holly like clued me in before I opened it up. He was like, "Oh yeah, Mr. Miyagi's legs are super short." Well, there he is. There's Mr. Mr. Miyagi. All right. And here's Johnny. Um, wow, this is a really cool looking figure, even out of the box. Again, he doesn't come with any accessories, and I think Raz Holly mentioned this before, uh, I think on his Batman video, there are a lot of these like modern figures, these more high-end figures, and these are high-end, I would consider them kind of in the middle high-end, because they're about 30 bucks a piece, that they come with all these accessories, they come with extra hands, they come with extra heads, they come with like little things like chopsticks and bonsai trees and horse shit that's like really neat, I guess. But 
Are you ever really gonna use these things? Are you ever really gonna have this figure posed with these things? Maybe you will, but chances are you probably aren't. And those things m might make it out of the box one time, and then they're just gonna go right back in the box. And if you don't keep the box around, they're probably headed to a drawer and then to the trash <laughs> later on. But let's take a look at Johnny Lawrence here. Um, the paint job on the gloves is I don't know if it's picking up on camera very well um, it's you can really you can almost see brush marks on this um, it's not the best thing in the world and you can almost see his skin through the bones on his costume which is kind of weird it's kind of a pinkish color um, in comparison to the paint I don't know what's up with that um, but it does, it is a good likeness of, of the character. It does look like he did in the movie. Um, it is a really cool figure regardless of like the tiny little problems it has. Um, he does have his little jumpsuit. These are, these clothed figures, these are like the modern version of, uh, like what Mego figures are. You've got these like, you know, cool seven or eight inch figures that are that have clothing um these don't have generic bodies that i maybe they do they might have generic bodies you know what they probably do they probably have some very unique sculpts for different things i know mr miyagi's tiny fucking legs are probably unique to him but um there's johnny and he's very cool okay strike first strike hard it's john crease um he also does not come with any accessories. Again, I don't think we need them. Mine looks like he's got like paint scuffs. It's so like they're painted with this matte paint and um, it doesn't always work out. I don't know if it's being picked up very well on the camera, um, but he does have his little, his little uh, tattoo, the Cobra Kai tattoo, um, which is pretty dope. He has a good likeness of the character. Um, he is, he is a cool fucking figure. Like, no doubt. This is a cool figure. I'm not sorry that I bought him or anything like that. Um, otherwise, like, pretty fucking sweet figure. It does look like who it's supposed to look like. There, There is some shoddy worksmanship going into these things. Like, they look almost, like, dirty or, or, or scuffed or whatever. And, like, dude, I just got him out of the fucking box. So they, they shouldn't look like that. They should be very, very clean, and they don't look that way. Once you get them under the hot lights in here, um, it all kind of comes together. Uh, but it is a very cool figure on a shelf. You're not really gonna notice all these tiny little details in regular light, but here in the photo booth, kind of we, we kind of see all. Oh no, Daniel, look out! Wah! So here they are, um, the last two. You've got Johnny and you've got Daniel. These are very fucking cool figures. These are the main event right here. If you were only ever gonna get one of these things, you would get this set. It does come with the little poster, it does come with the background. Um, it's very, very cool. It's packed in very nicely in the box. Um, these sculpts are very, very cool on these figures. They pose well, they do great action poses, great like karate stuff. Oh, cool. Like it's very, very cool. These are very fun. Um, I don't feel like I'm gonna break them. They feel solid. These are very nice nice figures so for the i believe i paid like 40 or 50 bucks um for the two of them and they generally go for about 30 a piece so bam big elbow um yeah these are freaking really great um figures and you can you know you can recreate all the scenes from the movie you set them up on a shelf and uh they're gonna be a great uh conversation piece in your home um especially for big fans of karate kid this would be the must-have of the uh of the set um, if not, you know, if you wanted to take a look at the, uh, you know, a little Miyagi to have at your desk or something like that, that might be something you might want to go for. But even again on these, the paint jobs, god damn, dude, like Daniel's face. I don't know if we're picking this up here. It's kind of like he's like, like he's wearing makeup or something, he's like caked around his nose. Um, and like on the side of his cheek there, like Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I mean, seriously, dude, for the money that you spend on these things, they should be a little bit better. 
Again, these are gonna look just fine um, once you get them on a shelf under regular light. Uh, but we do kind of see things a little bit clearer here um, under the big lights of the photo booth. We do have the Cobra Kai insignia and the Miyagi-Do uh, uh, bonsai on the back of the gi there. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah these, are, these are good figures. They're better than what you used to have, so let's take a look at some of the Remco figures. All right, so we have Daniel and Daniel together. Um, these are pretty much gonna be roundabout to the same sort of outfit. Um, we have the yin yangs on the uh, on the gi. He has a little cloth gi. Mine, this is filthy as fuck. I know. Um, I got this at a uh, at a consignment store or one of those like sort of thrift places, um, but still a super cool figure and um these go for insane stupid money online i found it for a pretty good price so i had to bite um even though it is kind of in bad shape but his leg isn't stuck like because they do this karate chop action thing like huh, huh, huh. and then um they came with stuff that you could break with them and then uh if you flip push the lever on the back um it used to. I don't know if this one still works. His his foot would kick out. He'd be like, ah! Um, and he would do kicks and stuff. And they came with little props and fun stuff to break. Um, I don't know how good of a likeness. But for the time, this was a pretty good likeness. This was a, a fine figure uh, for its time. Oh, look. Both Miyagi's are practically the same fucking height. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> like, seriously. Why did they make this so small? God damn it! NECA! Damn! Like every. Uh, dude, I was hoping. I was really hoping that when I opened these up, like these were gonna be the ones I didn't have a gripe with. And it turns out that the Golden Girls have been the best fucking NECA figures I've opened so far. How retarded is that? Come on! But anyway, let's take a look at Remco, Mr. Miyagi. He's very cool. He'd be very fun to have on your desk. He's actually not as dirty as my Daniel that I have. He does the same karate chop and kick. Um, this thing, it's gonna pose a little bit better for you, but he has his short, stupid legs. His legs aren't that short. He's not fucking, he's, he's not disabled. Like, look, look, his arms look super long. He has like big fucking weird arms because you made his legs show so short. He has regular size arms and like legs that are like half the size of what they're supposed to be. Finally, as, a, as an aside here, um, I, I want to show you Sato. He's one of my favorite characters from the franchise. Um, sadly, NECA is probably not going to make Karate Kid Part 2 figures, so we won't see a Sato, and he won't be able to uh, call everyone a coward. A coward! You are a coward! If you will not fight me, then you will die a coward. Well, that's it for the Karate Kid figures by NECA. Tell me what you thought of these figures down in the comments. Did you pick these up? Were you even able to find them? Hey, we'd really like to know what you'd like to see on the show. How about more consistent episodes? Whatever, Jess. I guess that's it for this episode. I knew you was gonna pussy out. You're running scared, fat boy. Scared? Whatever. I'm ready anytime you are, you conservative cock knocker. Well, I'm a coming. You stay right there. Well, that's settled. What? What settled? He said he was on his way. He was obviously bluffing. The hell I was bluffing! Now put him up, you commie scum! Commie? Ah! Oh! Yeah! Yeah! Ah! Oh! Ah! Ooh! Oh! Hey! Oh! Ugh. Sweep the leg! I've been waiting for this a long time! <laughs> You gotta get up, Dan. It's just like the Rocky movies. When he looks beat, but then he starts no-selling everything and beats the bad guy. I'm the bad guy? <laughs> get him a body bag. No! Where are you? No! And stay out! <sighs>
Ha! I knew you had it in you all along. No, you didn't! Anyway, who's to say who said who would kick whose ass? You said he would kick my ass! Would have made more sense for the story. What was that? Oh, nothing, nothing, boss. Another great episode. Thanks, Jess. Raz Holly, hit the music! Duke.